Hey, thanks for stopping by the Watercolor Methods YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll find out when we've got something new posted for you to watch. And maybe check out our website, watercolormethods.com, where we've got over 200 full-length, in-depth watercolor lessons and tutorials that you might like. In the meantime, let's take a look at this lesson. So the first method we're going to use for the wet and wet is actually kind of the traditional method, which is where we're going to wet the paper first with clear water, then we're going to put our color on, and to some degree we're going to let that we're going to tilt the paper up and we're going to let that color run down. Now we may have to help it a little bit to get it to run all the way down to the bottom edge of the paper, but we'll work along with that uh, as we do this little lesson. So the first thing we do is we get uh, actually a clean brush, make sure it's nice and clean, doesn't have paint in it already, and some clear water, again no paint in the water either, and you just want to soak that piece of paper, get it really wet, a lot of water on the surface. As I mentioned, the Arches paper is important, it's a, it's a pretty absorbent paper, it does have sizing on it, but it's fairly absorbent, that means it's going to pick up a lot of that water that you're putting on it uh, initially and it's going to soak into the fibers of the paper. Now, one of the things that's going to happen is that the paper is probably going to buckle a little bit if it's not uh, absolutely stretched tight, which this is not. So it's going to buckle a little bit, and we'll have to work against those buckles to some degree, but this is the way to start. And once you have that done, what, the next step is to go to your palette and get some color. In this case, I've got some nice dark ultramarine blue here. You can see that I've got a huge puddle of it out here on the paper, I'm sorry, on the palette itself, in the middle of the palette. And that puddle, you can see, is very wet, and it also has a whole lot of color in it. Even though it's very wet, there's a lot of blue in there as well. So what I'm going to start with is, I've got a really big round brush here, uh, one of the biggest rounds I've got on my on my easel here. And I'm getting a lot of this really dark ultramarine blue right at the top. Now my paper is so wet that what I'm counting on is that once I tilt it up, which is I'm about to do now, all that water on there is going to have that color run right down the page. Now this is an easy way to get a nice graded wash on your paper because it, we started with a lot of dark color here and it's going to gradually, that color, some of it is going to run down to the bottom of the page and as it does that it's actually going to get lighter because it's mingling with all of that other water that's already on the paper. So let me tilt this up and we'll sort of watch this happen. Now you can see that there's a buckle here in the middle and some of that color is not really running beyond that and if you have that problem what you can do is actually go back and, believe it or not, add more at the top of the paper, get uh, more of the ultramarine blue off your palette, put it at the top, and you can see that it's going to run down. And I'm putting more right over this area where it wasn't running down very well before. And once you've got a nice uh, sort of gradation happening, what you can do next is take your uh, any brush really, but I'm going to take the brush I started with, my inch and, a, inch and a half flat, and I'm going to start doing this with it. And by making these horizontal strokes, I'm able to really smooth out those kind of runs that were uh, created there in the wash itself as the paint was running down the page. And I can smooth them out and I get this nice transition. And if I need to get a little bit darker color at the top, which I think I do, I can go back to the palette, get a little bit more of that ultramarine blue, make it a little darker up there. And there I've got a nice, beautiful, actually, wet and wet wash with a nice grad gradation, a nice change from darker blue to lighter blue as we go from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. And it's really that simple. Uh, hopefully yours came out. Uh, and if it didn't, you know, you can always practice this a, a couple times. This is a great way to do it, 
but as you can tell from doing it, it's a little out of your control, isn't it? You get water on the paper, you put some paint up here, you let it run down the page, and it sort of does what it wants to do, not necessarily the way you wanted it to go. So it's a little bit random. It still has a nice effect. The other thing about this is that if you're not painting the whole paper, like we are here, uh, you wouldn't necessarily want to have water all over it and have some of this color going into passages where it doesn't belong. So this is an easy way to do it, but it's always not always the best way to do it because it's not really that well controlled. And what we're going to do now is the wet and wet technique, but using it with, um, frankly, the way I do it, which is we're going to get some wet color, a wet wash, if you will, on dry paper. Uh, this is the way I tend to paint myself rather than wetting the paper first. This allows me a little bit more control, as you'll see when we uh, do this exercise. On my palette, I've got uh, two colors, actually. Uh, well, I will have two colors. I have ultramarine blue out that we've already used in our earlier exercise. And I'm getting a little bit of permanent alizarin crimson out on the palette as well. And the reason is we're going to, in this exercise, we're going to do the wet and wet again, this time by applying uh, a very wet wash onto dry paper and working our way down from the top to the bottom. And we're going to try to simulate sort of the look of a nice beautiful sky the way we have in this painting here. By putting a little bit of permanent al alizarin crimson at the bottom edge near the horizon it sort of warms up and actually puts a little bit of pink down at that very very low part of the sky which is an effect you often see if you uh, look at particularly summer skies. So let's get started. Again I've got a big wet wash wet puddle, I should say, of ultramarine blue on my palette. And I'm starting in with a pretty heavy application of it there at the very top of the page. You can see I'm using my inch and a half flat. I work my way down a little ways. I actually clean the brush a little bit, get some clear water, add it to that puddle that's on the palette, and then pick up where I left off. Pick up that bottom edge, work my way down a little bit more, same thing, more water in the puddle on the palette. Work my way down a couple more strokes. A little more water in that puddle. Pick up another stroke or two down here. And then I'm going to pick up some of my permanent alizarin crimson and mingle that in and get all the way down to the bottom edge. And now I will, like I did on the first exercise where I started with wet paper, I'll tilt this paper up just a little bit to get some of that color to run down the page. I'm going to blot my brush out on a dry rag and pick up some of this excess water that's sitting, in this case it's sitting on the tape, but it's also sitting down here at the bottom edge, and if I don't pick that up, it's going to bloom. So I'm going to pick that up. And you can see I have a very nice effect, which could easily be uh, a nice blue summer sky. And it's really that easy. The key to it, and the trick to it, if there is a trick to it, is working nice and wet, nice and fluid, so that the color has a chance to work its way around the page, to flow up and down, flow uh, from side to side and from top to bottom, and mix and mingle together in these very nice, uh, somewhat random, but actually natural looking ways. I've got some water sitting here at the bottom edge. I'm going to pick that up again because I don't want it to bloom. So there it is. Those are the, those are the two ways really to do the wet and wet technique. Uh, they're both actually pretty easy as long as you're, as you're using plenty of water in the wash. Uh, you should get a nice effect like this one. No matter how this exercise came out for you, you can always go back, you know, restart this video, uh, try it a couple times, a few times, maybe many times, until you can get a handle on it. Uh, because as I say, it really is the most important technique that you're going to learn. And for the most part, it'll be used in the majority of the paintings that you do. You'll be doing wet and wet. You may do it, be doing wet and wet washes over top of earlier wet and wet washes in your painting, which is fine. But again, for the most part, you'll be working very wet with these wet and wet washes, uh, often layered one over the other in your painting uh, to great effect in, in watercolor. So do practice this, get a good handle on it, it's very important, and then you'll be on your way to making actually beautiful watercolor paintings.